Hello, folks, and we're back once again now with a simulation for series RLC circuits. So I've got a nice little circuit over here with three components. We have our voltage source, resistor, inductor, capacitor. So one kilohertz, 10 volt peak sign for the source. And I've already calculated the values for the reactive components, right? X of L, 2 pi FL. So that works out to J628. For the capacitor, 1 over 2 pi FC. That works out to negative J1592. And the Z for the whole thing is just the combination 1K plus the J628 minus J1592. Reels to reels, imaginaries to imaginaries. So these partially cancel, and our completed impedance is 1K minus J964. Now, we want to find the voltages across these components. We'll do a nice little uh, transient analysis here. We're also going to do a phasor plot. You might have noticed that I'm not using Tina TI. I am, in fact, using the student edition of Tina 12. Uh, and the reason being, it has a nice phasor plot uh, capability on it. So in any case, if we were to continue this uh, computation, we could just use Ohm's law, find the current, and then find the voltage across each one of the components, which I have down here. So our current is just the source, 10 volts at an angle of 90, divided by our impedance, the 1K minus J964. We get approximately 7.2 milliamps at an angle of 44 degrees. Okay. Now, that would make sense, you know, about 44, about 45, let's look at it that way. If these were identical, if this was 1K minus J, 1K, the angle would be exactly 45. Negative, okay, uh, because it is capacitive. So this looks pretty good, right? Voltage lags, uh, current, and a capacitor. So this circuit is net capacitance. So in other words, the, the current leads the voltage, so we have a positive value over here, 44 degrees. Looks good. All right, now we can find the various potentials across the individual components, just using Ohm's law, I times R. Multiply up your 7.2 mils at 44 at 1K. We get 7.2 volts peak, 44 degrees leading. Same thing for VC, and we get 11.5, uh, minus 46 degrees, in other words, lagging. And then the inductor, same deal. You only see 4.5 uh, volts, 134 degrees. And then... Um, there is a, a node on here, VLC. So this is the combination of the inductor and capacitor. And we can see how they partially cancel, right? If you took four and a half and you subtracted that from the 11.5, 11, uh, 11 you'd get seven, right? I'm just carrying out an extra digit here. These are rounded off and I'm getting 6.94 in favor, in other words, alongside the angle for the capacitor, right? Because the capacitive voltage is bigger than the inductive voltage. So we're left between these two with net capacitive, okay? So let's take a look at the transient analysis. I've already performed the transient analysis. So we have VS, VLC, and VC, and then I've defined in the post-processor a value called VR, which is VS minus VLC, and a value VL, which is VLC minus VC. And here we go, kind of busy. There's a lot of stuff here. Um, the dark blue is VS, okay? And then uh, the three components we're really interested in, VC, VL, and VR. You can see these. VC is a nice big one, over 10 volts, okay? Uh, VL, a bit smaller. So here's the green, the VL. Notice this is perfectly out of phase, 180 degrees out of phase with this sort of fuchsia color here. And then the what do you want to call this? Sort of like a teal aqua color. VLC is the combination of the two. So if you added the fuchsia with the green, you would get this. Okay, you would get this teal, whatever the heck it's called, aqua. And then VR, here we have the VR, which is uh, leading the maroon. And if you added this and this, right, if you add this maroon to this teal looking thing, um, you would, in fact, get the blue, right? These are much nicer drawings than I could ever hope to do uh, freehand. Um, this is a kind of a busy time domain drawing. Uh, you could generate this on a multi-channel scope 
if um, you used things like, you know, channel one minus channel two, channel three minus channel four, those kinds of things. Um, and this is essentially what you would see, right? But again, dark blue is our uh, source potential. And then the capacitor voltage we can see is lagging. It's later in time, right? The, um, you can't see the start of it over here, but the, the, the uh, VL, the dark green over here, is in fact leading and exactly 180 degrees out of phase with the capacitor. That has to be the case. And then the VR is in fact leading because uh, we have a capacitive circuit, net, right? The net value is capacitive. So we find the, uh, the um, current leading the voltage. And of course, the current and voltage in the resistor would have to be perfectly in phase. So that's what we see there. Wow. Okay. So if we uh, want a more compact representation of this, we can use a phasor diagram. Um, so on this version, since this isn't in um, Tina TI, you can come down to the AC analysis and grab phasor diagram. All right. That's where that would come from. And what you would wind up with is this little guy. Now I've already come in and changed the colors on this thing. Um, so everything matches out these colors match with the preceding one. So here's our VS at 10 volts, right? This is our reference angle zero. Okay, if you notice, right, that's the origin right there. So there's our 10 units, okay? Um, this is probably not perfectly square the way I've drawn it, but it's good enough. The um, VL, you can see coming off here, this was 134 degrees, I think, something like that. Um, and then the VL of uh, the VC, excuse me, is exactly 180 degrees out of phase, right? There's that fuchsia. And then there's this teal aqua thing, which is VLC. So I take the VL, subtract it from the VC, and this is what we're left with, all right? This teal color. And then we have the VR, which is the maroon. And we can see if we add the VR and the VLC, right? Just do a head to tail on here, pick this guy up and put him over here. Bingo, there's our VS, all right? So exactly 90 degrees between VL and VR, between VR and VC. You're always gonna see that. So this entire diagram could rotate one way or the other, all depending on you know, the relative magnitudes of these things. If VL was like way out here, okay, and VC was a lot smaller, um, then obviously the, the VL would dominate rather than the VC. So this whole thing would rotate. Of course, the VR might change too, but um, ultimately, when we add the pieces, it's got to come up to VS. Now, if you just looked at this really quick, you would think, you know, ignoring the angles, you would just say, oh, look, I got four and a half volts here. I got 11 and a half volts here, you know, roughly. Um, geez, that right there, you know, looks like 16 volts. And then I got another seven over here, right? You know, 23 volts, but I only have a 10 volt source. No. No, no, not at all, okay? Um, we have to include those angles, otherwise, you know, everything goes crazy. You know, it would be kind of like, uh, you know, ignoring the angles would be kind of like taking a checking, uh, checking account, your checkbook, and, um, you know, ignoring whether or not something was a deposit or a withdrawal. You know, they're just all numbers, so just add them all together. I mean, <laughs> that's a recipe for a problem, okay? So we see the same kind of thing going on here, right? So the, uh, the simulator here draws this really nice for us. Uh, we can see all of the individual pieces. You know, if you want to, um, you know, we could separate the curves. Maybe you see them a little better. Or we could just select certain curves out. You know, if, if we um, collected the curves and then maybe hid some. So there's our time domain. There's our... Phaser, nice and compact. That's what you see on a scope. That's a nice way just to visualize it. Alrighty, let's call it a day, or at least a video.